Oh, is this part two? Exposing a $500,000 scam? Today, we're uncovering a $500 million Ponzi scheme called Trader's Domain. In part one, we exposed a web- Ah, uh, yes, we just found the main men. Of scammers, we found an ongoing government investigation. But as I spoke to victims, I realized there was someone behind the curtains controlling it all. And that's when I find out there's this one guy named Dead who's one making guy. all the trades and he's running this Ponzi scheme. We now learn of this savant that is the man behind Trader's Domain. And so this is the first time I ever hear the name Ted Safranco. And I'm like, who the freak is Ted? Who's Ted? Who the fuck that is that guy? That is the multi-million dollar question. And I decided the best place to look for answers was starting with the victims. Welcome to part two. My understanding of who Ted Safranco was- Victim interview? The time I invested was an experienced uh, trader. He's a master trader with relationships like this all over the world, and he was internationally known and respected. Very credible, Wall Street trader. I know that's bad to, you know, judge a book off cover, like judge a book off of their cover, but you know, he just looked like, you know, like a normal guy, like a Wall Street trader, you know, he like, he didn't seem like the type of guy that would mess you over. But looking into his real past, right. everything showed the Surely. opposite. He didn't work on Wall Street. He got his start in 2016 when he was the student of a 23-year-old get-rich-quick guru on Instagram named <laughs> Dino Koroff. We know this because of a testimonial he filmed. Hi, everyone. My name is Ted. Uh, I've been working around right now with Nino for probably about six months. Really, what I did is, for 2016, what I tried to do is I really wanted to set myself up nice. Being a little bit older, I've been working for many years now, almost 15 years. I wanted to have a lifestyle change. I wanted to get into something different to give myself a better opportunity in life. And literally, I went through social media. I found Nino on Instagram. I sort of laughed actually because I saw him with his Lambo and all his fun stuff. And me being as old as I am now, maybe you know, 37 years old, 36 years old, I couldn't really fathom how somebody was doing what they were doing at such a young age. Wow. The answer, of course, to Ted's question is that Nino was scamming people with Get Rich Quick courses, and Ted soon figured this out. He started his own grift called the Forex Family Course, which eventually led to the launch of his very own Forex brokerage called Trader. Wait, so what was that video? Was that like a trailer to that man's website or some shit? Like he's like, this guy changed my life with his scams. There's domain. Ted said that it would be non-manipulated as opposed to most of the scammy brokerages of the time. And with his business partner, David Negus, they opened their doors in 2018. I found this out because I talked to the roommate at the time who witnessed everything. So my name's Jonathan Sumetta. Roommate. I was roommate with David Negus at the start of 2018, pretty much for the whole duration of a year. And I witnessed the inception of Trader's Domain from the beginning. It was basically run out of the spare bedroom of our house. That's right, we have an eyewitness who saw the, the spare bedroom. Of this. And what he told me is that Trader's Domain was originally selling themselves as one of the good guys. Forex has a lot of shysterness in the industry. I'm sure a lot of people are aware of that. And there's a lot of brokers that have bad reputations, you know, with doing shady dealings. Ted and Dave started this operation under the premise of the good guy and honesty and being for the little guy sort of thing, someone you could trust, which everybody bought. You know, Ted, Ted did have a, a good reputation in the community. The way they did this was they described themselves as an A-book brokerage, which I didn't really understand at the time, but a basically means they were one of the legitimate. The highest? Okay. Can you just explain really briefly what the difference between A-book and B-book are? So A book, okay. your orders are direct to the market, and B book. It's like they're tier lists. Basically, the broker takes the opposite side of your trade. So when you lose oh. money, they win. Because most most traders lose, so a lot of lot of a lot of brokerages go B book because they make money off the trader. They're not. You're not. Your mark. Your orders aren't actually going to the market. It's just the broker basically shamming you. Okay. To summarize what he said real quick, because it's important. Scheming. Forex brokers, which are A book. It just means that your trades are real. Fee booking is when the trades are kept in-house and, and things can be faked. They can be messed with. And this is why Ted said that his brokerage was a book. He couldn't scam you. And he claimed this repeatedly. But the question is, is that true? 
with stories of changing trades, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> and then all of a sudden... I, I love that part. That is my favorite part about all these videos, is they always have that one thing in common, is if they're always like, trust me, I am reputable because I say so. This is not a scheme because I say so. And motherfuckers just believe them. Everything magically got erased. And they said, oh, the crazy. server's refreshed. We had to refresh the servers. Like that somehow changed all the trades, right? And not only were the stories shady, when I asked the roommate about it, he told me about a very strange conversation he overheard. I was in my room one day and I overheard a conversation and I thought I caught something about B booking, switching people from A book to B book. And so I asked Dave about it. Switch. And he blatantly said to me, he's like, He's like, yeah, he's like, if people are going to be losing, we might as well be booked. So we're just leaving money on the table. It was kind of a shock to me because that's, you know, kind of went against everything that they had Damn. sort of built this platform. Wait, so they were actually a book and then switched it because they were losing. And they were like, shit, if we're going to lose or if they're going to lose, we shouldn't lose with them, should we? <laughs> like, holy shit, damn. Poor Mon, so I just didn't, didn't really know how to take that, but I just took it for what it was. Wow. If That's this is wild. true, this means their whole story is fake. But of course, claiming this is a pretty huge accusation, and I didn't want to do it on the word of just one person, because it would mean that everything was built on lies and fraud. So I wanted more proof. So to do this, I set up a Discord channel to investigate Trader's Domain and invited all the victims to come share with me what they had found. And soon, many of them started sharing evidence, including a document which they said would prove that they were B booking. These people showed me an invoice from a platform called B2 Broker, addressed to Traders Domain Ooh. FX. What if they were always B booking and they only said they were like switching because that guy was there? Which had a very important line item. Quote, minimum monthly payment for the use of B book service. Why would Traders Domain need to pay for a B book service if they were A book? Now, of course, right. we also need to talk about who is B to broker? They call themselves a white label solution for brokerages and exchanges, which simply means they sell a brokerage product that you can slap your name on. And it appears that this is exactly what Ted Safranco did, which means that the back end of Trader's Domain and what Ted is even Wait, selling- Wait, so it's not his? It's a rebranded product. Yeah, it's not even his realistically when you think about it. He, well, it is his, he bought it. It's just like, he didn't make it. He is not the creator. So. We'll put B to broker on the huh. board over here because they're going to be key to understanding this whole scam. Because as I found more of these invoices, I realized B to broker may have helped facilitate this whole thing, all apparently for the low, low price of a thousand dollars a month for this fee. Now, what these several invoices do is not only corroborate the story the right. roommate was telling us about B booking. It means that the trades and the crazy returns are all likely fake. It was all a fraud based on a software Ted himself never even built. And of course, now the question is, okay, if the trades are fake, where did the money go? Because the investment money was very much real, even if the trades were fake. Right. We know for a fact that over $100 million was invested based on the CFTC's Damn. estimate. But based on what I have, I think it's significantly more. Either way, we're talking about an extremely large amount of cash. So it had to go somewhere. I mean, we know from our first episode that a lot of it went to this company called CCAP Holdings, but what happened after that? As I began to ask myself this question, I was contacted by an anonymous source who found out that I was investigating. As I said, I had made it public at that point, And they told me they had a friend who might know something more. Something that could, quote, show B-book activities, money laundering, and fake invoices. They asked if I was interested, of course I was. And when this friend got in touch, they claimed to have literally 2,000 plus files and documents on- A few gigabytes. Domain. Damn. I was a little skeptical at first. There's a few gigabytes. showed up, Jesus. even I was surprised. Oh, shit. It took me weeks to go through all the documents. And the movie but continues. Eventually, 
a pattern started to emerge. <laughs> These little edits are cool. This man turned this shit into a show for real, for real. The more I pulled on the threads, the more I realized. There's some Netflix it was shit. All connected. Alright, I think I get it. I think I understand how Trader's Domain took in money. If you look at our old understanding of the company, we had the basics, but we're missing several things, okay? It starts with the sponsors. They were micro celebrities or influential people who were paid very well to bring in investors, money. And the more you brought in, the more you were paid, which was actually explained to me by a sponsor who had $10 million underneath him. So you've got 10 million under you that's locked up. How many does the guy above you have? He won't even tell me, but millions. He was getting like probably half a million a Ten month just mil. in payouts. Like I, I was doing well out there. I was getting paid like 20, 30,000 a month. All right, so these sponsors would get a cut a of month. the money that they brought in, which meant that they went out and flexed on social media to bring in more clients. Some bragged about yachts, some invited people to DM them for 10% monthly ROI deals. Either way, once the victims were on the hook, they would be instructed mm. to go one of two payment routes. The first option was cash. They would wire money to a US-based bank like CCAP Holdings with a generic memo that said services and definitely not Forex or investments because that would trigger red flags. And once word went out that the wire had been sent, before the money even got there, Trader's Domain would immediately credit them on the back end with fake money, which we know from interviews I did. He would credit my fake. account without ever having any money before I ever gave him money, you know what I mean? So the numbers were there before you ever got... Before I ever paid for anything. Before he even so put in. I get a Trader's Domain confirmation and it shows up in my Bro, trader's what? domain, half a million dollars sitting in my- Bro, how the fuck are you getting money before you even put in? Why? How? Count. I mean, thanks, but what the fuck? Next day, Chase calls me, and they go, oh, we just want to verify this is you. And I'm like, oh, you haven't released the wire? Oh my god. So they had accredited your account before the money yeah. had ever hit? Yeah, before the money had ever hit. All right, but if the money on trader's domain was fake, where did the real money go? Well, I believe they had a money laundering operation to get the money offshore. This is based on a series of invoices offshore. I was given showing money being sent from onshore banks, heads of Franco, David Negus, Tintran controlled, like Sag Capital. And then they would send that to offshore companies, shell companies, which were very suspicious. For example, we found invoices sending $100,000 to a company called Safe Seal Technology. Why? In another one, they sent a million dollars to Discover Tour Plus. Now, this one in particular had a website, and if you go to discovertourplus.com, they claim to website. be a travel agency, but there's nothing to actually buy. I tried booking my own vacation, which I desperately need at this point because I'm way too deep in this investigation, but none of the links would let me book. So this website appears to just be a front for funneling millions of dollars offshore. Besides, who even pays a million dollars to a travel agency if you're a Forex investment company? That especially does that multiple times. Of course, the alternate explanation is that the reason you might send money from a shell company in the US to an offshore shell company is to launder that money because then you can now declare that million dollars the travel agency took in the result of a bustling business instead of fraud. Now, that's my theory, but we have dozens of these invoices which seem to confirm it. And you might expect that this was the main way Trader's Domain moved large chunks of cash. But probably not. You'd be wrong because in 2023, laundering money through banks is like communicating with oh, smart signals shit. instead of text messages. They're in the blockchain. Now, the real way to launder money has changed. They're in the blockchain. Today, it's crypto. <laughs> so this brings us to right. option two of how to move money. Oh, no. Crypto is the main way traders right. move money. It was perfect for them, and it was the main way they circumvented regulation. Recall at the beginning of this show, I told you right. that offshore companies mm. couldn't solicit U.S. investors. But 
Trader's Domain told people that up front. They said, quote, Trader's Domain does not solicit U.S. clients. However, they would claim underneath that, quote, just to note, we have crypto accounts available, <laughs> which is sort of like saying, That's hey, say we don't let in U.S. clients through the... Bro, that is like... I, I don't know what he's going to say, but that's bas that is crazy. They're basically like, you can't steal, but hey, there's this piece of candy and my back is turned. Front door, but just a note, we have a back door. Because when you <laughs> went to their website to sign up, I kid you not, as country of origin, you could select your country as the that's country just crazy. of crypto. Which, unsurprisingly, some people actually did. Uh, one of the early things that felt weird to me is that you couldn't register as a U.S. citizen on his website. It was crypto. You had to go in as a crypto user. I can still show that you is on strange. my account where I'm listed as a crypto user and not a U.S. citizen. That is clearly illegal. But the reason it matters is not that they circumvented regulation. People do that all the time. It's the scale. My shoulder is this busted. This all happening. This wasn't a few dollars. This is hundreds of millions. I mean, a single one of their payment processors in crypto complained in a recent lawsuit that the founder believed that, quote, the trader's domain is clearly a Ponzi scheme. They have moved over $50 million in cryptocurrency and US currency directly to the trader's domain systems. Not only that, a different payment processor also had their transaction data with trader's domain leaked to us. With the help of a blockchain intelligence company called Crystal Blockchain, we traced even more money that had come in. According to them, roughly 450 million Golly. went into Trader's Domain. I have a and that combined with the 50 million from that other crypto payment huh. processor is where we arrived to our $500 million estimate. Now, bear in mind, this is just crypto. This is not talking about fiat here. And this is real money that went in, not fake oh, Ponzi games. And at this point in the investigation, I'm feeling pretty confident. We have two really big things. The first is that the scale of this thing is huge, probably bigger than even the government believes it is. But I also feel extremely confident we have proof of fraud. And the only thing left to do is confront the man behind it all. My interview? It's a Franco. And this is also the thing that I've been putting off doing the whole time, to be honest, because the entire investigation, as I spoke to people, I was warned not to reach out because Ted was well known for going after anyone who went after his brokerage. He allegedly said things like, quote, you want to come after my brokerage, you have a death wish in messages, and I am going to put a bounty on your head were a lot more of these. And of course, he also famously threatened people on video. I take a flight to the UK right oh, now. Oh yeah. Just and show up and curb stomp their heads. Yeah, I get arrested. So what? I win because so? they're dead. So yeah, the guy is kind of a psycho. Right. So I was very nervous about doing this. And so I decided to go to the bar and get me a little bit of liquid courage. <laughs> As you do. Coffee been sitting here for two hours are you gonna do it or not give me give me this one more shot okay and then i'll do it <sighs> it was the, like the final boss here goes nothing this is the last episode he's gonna cliffhang oh man Come on, Ted. but there's I a fly you're not even gonna answer i saw a fly answer the f come on Forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Please Didn't even answer. I knew it. That settles that. You want another drink? I guess so. You humans are such odd creatures. You were nervous about calling, yet you seem upset he didn't answer? I was concerned. <laughs> I mean, but once I was committed, I, I don't know. It just feels a little anticlimactic, I guess. True. Well, maybe it's for the best. It'd be like Not that sometimes. Hollywood ending. You do the best you can, and sometimes you have to enjoy a consolation prize. What's that? How about a drink with a friend? Wait, I thought you couldn't drink. Take the shot, coffee. Right. Where's it gonna go? I've been watching you hide. Oh shit. Coffeezilla music? Eyes. The Coffeezilla track? What is this? Oh, 
Oh shit. It's Colin? I thought it was about to be Coffeezilla rapping. Uh, hello? I thought it was gonna turn Before into a music video. Obviously, I've spoken to my council. We we know about your YouTube channel now. We reviewed it. I mean, there's really nothing of substance on there, to be honest. I think it's more of a glorified clickbait channel. I'm in chats right now on Telegram. And he's still in there actively saying that he's trading. You can think anything you want. You can turn around and say that I am gaming the system. I'm gaming my followers. That is such a chicken sh response from a total coward. No accountability at all. I'm the enemy of the state for most people because of what I do and how I do it. Nobody knows anything about his wife because they don't have the resources that I have. My resources can find out every little thing about you. You will see the amount of destruction I leave. Bro has like tripled his threats. Holy shit. That's a lot. The BT broker was asked for a comment. The response is we fully support individuals who are fighting against scams and any illegal unethical schemes. As soon as we became aware of the negative information concerning traders domain, we conducted a comprehensive internal compliance check and prom promptly terminated our agreements with them. Damn. Terminated. Okay. Damn. So one more episode. Boss of battle next next week probably i don't even know <laughs> shit sounds kind of spooky man's gonna come after his fam what the hell it's too far man 